Welcome to The Art of Mark's Trains, Part 20. Tonight I walked around the collection and just picked up some uh, 3 16 inch Mark's Customs uh, or Conversions. And uh, let's take a look and we'll talk about each one of them. Uh, most of them started out as Mark's cars. Uh, some of them are other manufacturers. We'll start over here on the left. The uh, plastic tender is a repaint, and uh, it was probably Southern Pacific. Those seem to be pretty common. And it's got 316 scale trucks, and uh, it's Rock Island 8362. And there's a caboose that's painted maroon. That's a a great match for it and so sometimes I run some 3 16 cars with this uh, tender and caboose combination. Behind that is a Santa Fe box car and it is a sheet metal construction. Um, looks like everything's metal except for the roof walk. It's an S scale car. The uh, underbody's been removed and Mark's trucks added and it really makes a handsome car. There's a lot of S scale cars that are great conversions for 3 16 uh, Mark's. Here's another one. Um, this is a reefer in Milwaukee Road and uh, die cast uh, ice hatches on the top, ladders, Really good looking cars. There's a New York Central uh, Woodside box car. It's actually made out of wood and uh, with some kind of a kit, and it has Mark Strux on it now. This is a, another Woodside kit. It's got a printed uh, Swift side on it. Um, I think I painted the roof and the ends boxcar red and put Mark trucks on it. Here's another metal boxcar, Canadian National, in a Tuscan color. It's got ladders, got a fair amount of detail, nice heavy car, looks good on 3 16 trucks. And next is a merchandise service car, pretty common. Um, this one has the opening doors. It was a seven inch four wheel car and the side frames have been cut away. And the hole where the uh, coupler went is now the hole for the uh, rivet for the trucks. And uh, that makes a nice little conversion. Here's another conversion, uh, CNO high side gondola in the dark brown, the medium brown. And somewhere I've got a yellow wabash it's got the same conversion where the side frames have been cut down and the trucks mount where the coupler was threw this one in it's actually a plastic car it's uh, probably somebody like s helper uh, it's never been finished all the details haven't been glued on one of the problems you can kind of see the trucks sit really high and i haven't figured out how to recess that in uh, I may end up making this an S scale car and take the trucks off. Uh, the auto loader is actually pretty interesting. Let me make a little room. Be better to have a side view. So this um, is a CNO 316 flat car. And what I've done is just create a little wooden platform for the second level and it simply is wedged in you can see right here there's a, a little piece of wood that protrudes out and goes into the U channel of the stake and then there's a an end that keeps the car from rolling uh, as it's moving along and then the stakes make uh, stops for the cars and these are 1960 uh, Ford Starliners and uh, 
they look perfect on this car. The size is great. They're one sixty fourth. I also use the uh, F and F cars, and uh, they look uh, really good as well. They're plastic, but uh, they're the right size. So an easy conversion uh, didn't do anything to harm the car. Just a wooden platform that wedges into the stakes. All right, the next car is a Wabash uh, box car. And uh, I painted this a long time ago with some O-scale decals. And I took the color off of the uh, post-war Lionel uh, Brakeman car. And uh, I, I just like it. It's pretty plain. There's no uh, ladders. There's no data for the, the box car, but I like it. Uh, this is another simple one. This is a, a retired LNE hopper, 3 16 This is the one with the uh, vertical bar on the end. It was a pre-war car. You can see the slot in the coupler. Uh, Post-war wheels. But uh, nevertheless, that looks really good, in my opinion. And uh, Last on the left side here is a B&O caboose. I threw this in because it's kind of hard to, to find. And uh, I had this one was a four wheel and the facade trucks were broken on it. So I cut them off and put a conventional 3 16 frame underneath. But I think that makes a really handsome car. Uh, this one Steve Eastman did for me in the... Uh, kind of the faux wrap um, uh, where you take and print this on paper and then glue it on the side. I'm sure this was a, a Canadian Pacific car at one time. Steve made a lot of these for our grandkids and uh, so it's a special car. This is one I found on eBay. I just thought it was interesting. They made a shell car in a kind of a primer red color. Yeah, I just kind of like it. Um, here's one that I painted. I'm, I'm pretty happy with. SBNS is my favorite railroad and uh, not a lot of detail on it. You know, it's missing the ladders and uh, if I could figure a way to paint those on, I think it would make a really handsome car. I also painted the Great Northern. This is uh, definitely one of my favorites and I uh, really like how it turned out. I like the uh, matte finish and I like the decals. Uh, uh, even without the ladders, I think it looks, looks really good. Here's another wooden kit uh, with paper sides, pre-printed uh, ginger ale car. It's a reefer, it's got a wood top and wood ice hatches. Um, get a lot of compliments on that car. I threw this Redding caboose in. I'll show you why in just a moment. Um, over here is a Northern Pacific. Uh, it's another car from the Northwest. Being up here in the Northwest, we like to see some of those cars on our railroad. It's another metal reefer. Uh, this one is uh, just like the Milwaukee Road car that I showed earlier. This is kind of a special one. Um, it's not a production car, but this is somebody made a replica of maybe what was a salesman sample. Um, it's not scale trucks. It's just got the six inch frame with the uh, eight wheel one way couplers. Um, but they did a really good job on it. Uh, the original has the Marks decal just like that. And uh, it really, they really nailed it. And uh, that's, that's a neat car. I think you've seen this one before. I may have shown it on the White Knight uh, video. This is uh, the Turtle Creek Central route of the Dashing Turtle. Uh, decals that were available in Model Railroader. And uh, I took an old rusty uh, 316 tank car and, and repainted it. 
couple of tenders here. Uh, back to the S, P, and S. The large football logo and the small logo. And uh, what's special about these, I mean, they're repainted, of course. But I don't know if you can tell how narrow these are. I narrowed them up to be the same as a uh, 3 16 car. And I took a table saw and ran it right up there on these lines so that didn't didn't lose any rivet detail and I was able to glue it back together with liquid cement uh, just to show you the difference <clears throat> side by side what a regular slope back tender looks like maybe this view would be better so I took probably a quarter inch off the width it makes a big difference. It looks a lot better running with 3 16 cars. So that was kind of fun. There's an article in the 2002, maybe, um, E-Trains that's online. Uh, might be an interesting read if you are able to find it. Here's a repaint I did of a wedge tender. So thought it would be different to have a Pennsylvania. I think I got the decals from uh, Bob Grossman uh, quite some time ago. Still looks good. And let's see. Oh, one more six inch car. This is kind of a beater, but somebody took a Sinclair uh, six inch tank car and put it on a six inch eight wheel frame. It never came that way, but I think it really looks good on that frame. Uh, like I said, it's pretty beat up. The frame's beat up just as equally as the uh, tank car, so they go together well, and it looks good on a train. Here is a Redding wedge tender. Uh, this perhaps is the biggest oversight of Mark's trains ever. Uh, we have all these Redding cabooses. I mean, half of your 3 16 cabooses are Redding, and there's no tender. The New York Central uh, caboose, the other one, they have all sorts of New York Central wedge tenders. So why not have a Redding tender for a Redding caboose? That is an oversight to me. So this one, somebody else painted, decaled. I got this actually from Bill Maddy. Uh, he was kind enough to sell it to me you know, 25 years ago. And I run it with the Redding caboose. Uh, since we're talking about cabooses, this uh, is a run-of-the-mill New York Central, uh, except for at one time I took a uh, passenger car pickup and made it illuminated. Took the passenger car light socket and stuck it up inside, uh, cut hole, and it looks like it could be factory, uh, but it's not and it lights up when it goes down the track. And I think the last car is a, is a fake for sure, but it's a Pennsylvania uh, box car, and it has a red bottom and red ends. And uh, if you're familiar with the red end cars, I believe they were only available in Union Pacific and in Pacific Fruit Express. So this is what that would have looked like if they put a red end on a brown car. Um, not sure what to think about that, but it's kind of a fun conversation piece. And uh, even on the inside, it's red. So Hope you enjoyed all the customs and conversions. I know I'm gonna be kicking myself because I've missed some, but uh, here's another quick scan of everything. And uh, let me know if you want me to uh, elaborate on any of them, and I'd be happy to do that. And thanks for watching.